we are now joined by the Husker Hall of Famer. Do we call him Primetime Foreman or do we just still call him Jay? What's up, brother? Yeah, <laughs> prime time. Yeah, yeah. I wish. I, you know, back in the day, I used to think I'd try to be prime time, but uh, I tried one time, man. I got a little bit of coarse hair uh, wrap. Tried to put me that little wet Jerry curl in there. It dried up real quick. So I wasn't <laughs> that was about as long as I was prime time. About one day. <laughs> oh man. <laughs> Uh, hey, hey, AD, I, ha I had the Jerry without the curl. <laughs> you were just rocking the Jerry. <laughs> yeah, it was, it, yeah, the curl, the curl left after about six hours, you know. <laughs> you know, um, um, Jay, what do you think about this, man? I mean, the, 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 the prime time going to Colorado, uh, um, just overall, just overall, what's your thoughts on it? I mean, I think it's good. I mean, no, I don't think it's good. I think it's great. I think it's uh, it's a long time coming. I think that sometimes people, uh, you know, it's hard. You know, people are like, you know, they, Dion's almost uh, 60 years old. And people are still up here talking and looking at him as if he was the 21-year-old, you know, that was working on his own NIL deals in his dorm in uh, at Florida State. Where they don't realize, really. He's one of the best coaches out there because he knows how to lead. And uh, so I think it's good for college football. I think it's uh, definitely uh, there's some meetings going on that uh, normally wouldn't because I think people always sit. First thing what people are going to do, and this is this is what I tell a lot of my ba basketball players, a lot of people, sometimes you have self-doubt, but morally, more, most likely, it's the people that are afraid of your potential. And that's why people doubted that he was ever going to be a good coach. He's a dude, man. He's a, uh, he's a, uh, he's about his business. You know, he doesn't. Uh, he's about football and everything he does, and and uh, I think it'll be good. I think, you know, there's some, there's gonna. I, in my prediction, right here, I think there's 4,100, 4,100, I think or so in the transfer portal. Mm -hmm. I think in 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 very short time, it's going to be close to ten thousand. Yeah, yeah. I th I think you're going to see people in the portal. And now what is that? How does that affect Dion or help Dion? It helps him because one, he went to Jackson, Jackson state and was successful with limited resources and limited support. You know, people don't realize like if you really sit there and listen to what he was saying that he, he kind of took the, the job and did it for free. took a lot of his paycheck and paid some of his assistants never got the support from their boosters or the like, what they could get from local and, uh, you know, obviously the, the university mm -hmm. um, to, to keep, you know, doing stuff. He got a big money in there from Under Armour to help the facility. So now he goes to Colorado, a team that, uh, you know, at that time or at one point in time had a very storied tradition, still has brand power, mm -hmm. um, still in a, in a Power 5 conference and with two of the big dogs leaving the Power 5 conference. The time is not just about, Colorado. It's about what he's going to be bringing to the Pac-12 and what he could potentially do if the people in Colorado get behind him and help him and assist him to be, you know, a winning coach. You know, at least up until their standards, what can really help the university long after he's gone. Um, you know, coaching there. So I think it's good. But I can tell you what: there's a lot of <laughs> there's a lot of coaches on notice. There's a lot of players I think that are inspired uh, by it. You know, from both you know close there and afar and uh you know obviously you know people have seen the videos where you know he put the whole team on notice and uh you know i think really what's really good is the breath of fresh air because it's not personal it's business he's coming in there to coach uh, he wouldn't be there if you guys are winning and what you guys have been doing up to that point has not been good enough and uh so however he goes about delivering his message is just different and, and uh you know, I think the, the players will be receptive to it, and uh, they have no choice but to embrace it. But uh, I think he'll, you know, he'll he'll, he'll uh, have a positive impact because that's all he's ever done. Jay, I, I read an article in the Athletic yesterday that two hundred or more than two hundred recruits have already reached out to Colorado right. about the possibility of playing. I mean, how much does that just show that guys want to play for specific coaches and, and less than just the universities nowadays, and how much that's changed? Yeah. Well, it's 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 all encompassing, uh, Nick. 
it's 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 they want to play for a, a coach. You know, you know this is recent. You know, this is what people don't understand. It's not just you know black athletes or African American athletes. Yeah. You know, knowing knowing about Jackson State, it's everybody. Oh, it's every coach. So he he's it, it's yeah, it's about playing for a certain coach, but it's about being coached. It's about being pushed. Mm-hmm. It's about being, you know, the standard that you're going to be, you know, be the best that you could be. And sure, having a Hall of Fame, you know, player and, and a great recent coach coach you. And in this day of social media where he's embracing it um, is a plus, but it's not all Dion. It's the coaching staff that he brings. It's what he's actually talking to you about. He's talking to you about making you the best player for the possibility that you could get to the NFL or, you know, maybe, you know, CFL, mm-hmm. wherever you get a chance. But here's the thing: what people don't understand, he's extreme. If you if you really read some more articles about him, he's extremely disciplined himself and his players, he, and he's not playing no games. Mm-hmm. He expects you to be accountable and to be the best you could be academically and socially. He's going to hold you accountable into a higher standard that you ever been done before, and he's going to have you work. They got and you see they have plenty of fun, right? They have fun, they win, and all that stuff. But he knows how to get the best out of you, and that's what actually what players. Um, really really gravitate to and i think you know we went through maybe like a five to ten year period where you felt like you had to uh coddle players but now you're seeing as it comes out of it along with other things that you don't have to do it now you know will it work only time will tell it you know it won't be from a lack of trying or having a lack of uh or a uh, lack of uh you know football acumen and coaching it's gonna a lot of things are gonna have to be you know from support both uh you know in the community and the university but uh, as of right now, you know, I mean, I think that uh, there'll be a lot of guys uh, wanting to have a chance to, you know, experience being coached and being in there and pushed to be the best that they can be. And, um, yeah, it's great that Dion's there, but you got to think everything. I mean, Dion just didn't get this job based on him being there and running around and, you know, saying I'm Dion. He was actually coaching those kids and doing the things he needed to do to create a, a program that's been, uh, or at least in Jackson State, that has been successful where he's at. And he did it in high school. He did it at a, I think he has like a, he had a Christian high school down there with, you know, where he coached, obviously he coached all of his sons. Um, and they were winning state titles. He knows how to coach. He knows how to build a program. He, uh, you know, really it goes against the naysayers where you need some sort of experience or some sort of resume. Now, granted, being a Hall of Fame player probably puts your resume at the top of the list, but you know, you have a lot, you know, we've been through it ourselves at multiple times or multiple coaching staff that, uh, you know, tell where your resume is not good. Well, you know, do this, do that. Well, it comes down to coaching and leading, you know, that before what you do on your on your uh, on your resume, and that's a perfect. He's a perfect example of it. And not only him, Hugh Jackson, Eddie George, Eddie Robinson Jr. All these guys are having a huge impact down there, and they definitely can coach at any level. Because at the end of the day, coaching is coaching. I mean, I, I it's always funny when you hear, you know, media guys, oh, can you coach in the power five? I mean, I, I'm not really sure if you think that like they're only down there playing like base cover one. And they're not doing anything sophisticated. Now, granted, whatever everything that goes into it is different, you know, as far as you know, facilities, support, and all that. But playing wise, it's not any different. And mm-hmm. if you talk to, if you really talk to pro scouts, there's not a big difference from, you know, the Power Five to the FCS to even a little bit of HC, HBCU. Now, the depth of athletes out there, so I'm particularly talking about the skill position, is, is obviously higher at the at the Power Five level. But there's not a big difference. Where the difference is, is in the line, the line, the linemen, mm-hmm. and the depth of linemen, the size of the linemen. So now he's going to be able to go up there and get some guys. You know, look, there'll be guys that maybe, you know, get replaced at Alabama, have an injury. They go there and we get a chance to really go play and uh, get coached. And uh, so it'll be interesting to see what happens in a year or two. Jay, I got a question for you, too, here, man. How – there's, you know, there's a lot of people saying, you know um, – um, a lot of different factors. We're talking more about when you're off the two. How crucial is it yeah. going to be for Dion though to hire um, the right coaches? Because I think his coaching staff is going to be huge. You can get all the transfer portals, of course. That is yeah. that is the lifeblood. But how crucial is it going to be him to hire coaches that have maybe have some experience uh, in Pac uh, in Power mm-hmm. Five football? Yeah, because he. Sorry, don't I don't mean to interrupt Jay because he talked about how he's not taking jackson state coaches he wants the jackson state coaches to stay there and keep that going and keep that going yeah right how crucial yeah. is that going to yeah, be i mean it's, it's going to be huge and uh you know i mean the thing is what, what people don't understand is like 
um, Dion being in in the world that he's that he's been in, you know, as far as being on TV for I think ten plus years, and and he knows these coaches that he potentially could reach out to, um, both at the you know pro level and the college level, who would fit the script to do that. So he's going to go in there and get guys, and he knows who to call and ask who you know what's the best coach you know to to their best coaches to bring in. So. Um, he has a plan. He didn't take this job on a whim. And, and, and the AD said that, you know, they had reached out to Dion about a month ago. So, uh, you know, Colorado had to be appealing to him at the first glimpse, you know, seeing right. where they were at, where he could take him. And so he already starts formulating probably potential guys that he could have on his coaching staff. So I think he'll have a little bit of uh, known, known, you know, commodities to help him navigate it and be able to navigate it pretty quickly. And then also he has some guys that he wants to, you know, you know, grow and kind of see them flourish as well. So I, him putting together a staff, I don't think would be a problem. I think the biggest thing with them, which has been with a lot of Colorado uh, coaches, is the support staff, the the, the staff that uh, helps them be successful day in and day out. The operation staff, the recruiting staff, the budget, making sure you're getting getting uh, donations and and helping to build your NIL department, all the stuff that you need in order to be successful at the uh, Power 5 level, and particularly the Pac-12, uh, is going to be just as huge as the X's and O's coaches because it's not, you know, when you have, like, say, Jay Foreman as your linebacker coach, uh, but, the, you know, also making sure you have a really good analyst or defensive assistant, you know, because it's got to be a team effort. And um, you got to have guys that are will have the same vision and same wants and are willing to take, what Dion um, wants as a, a program and, uh, you know, go out there and, and build it and help it. And so he's trying to build Colorado back up to what they once were or close to it and obviously, you know, change the culture up there. I mean, it's going to be a lot of change for them. I mean, you know, people don't understand that Colorado, and, and this is where it's so, and, 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 uh, so huge, is where, where is if you really – would take time and really look at universities where, where they struggle that Colorado has really always has had some major issues um, on their campus. I mean, major issues on their campus. Mm -hmm. That's what's really, that's part of what held it back. So for them to go and really make this type of hire uh, shows that they are actually have some self-reflection, which is huge. You know, that's part of the healing process, AD, you know, self-reflection. Hey, this is where we really messed up. Let's not try to sweep it underneath the rug. Right. But let's also get somebody that's actually going to help build and, and, and do this. Dion, uh, Dion understands that, look, he has a reputation to uphold. He's, all, he's a college football Hall of Famer, NFL Hall of Famer, huge person. He's an iconic figure, first of all. Mm -hmm. So people are more people are lining up to watch him fail than, than succeed. And also Colorado's not an easy job. You have to, it's commendable that he's, he's willing to take an, a job that's not, uh, quote, unquote, ready-made. Cincinnati wanted him. He'd be following Luke Fickle. It'd be more turnkey. Um, I know Georgia Tech would probably be a more of an easy job because just because you know Georgia, the plethora of athletes you're able to get or get you know have access to. Um, there was other jobs too, like South Florida. That'd be a little bit easier considering you're in Florida and you know you get what I'm saying. You're talking about Colorado is just one one and eleven. So I, I think it's uh, commendable on both sides, but it's going to be uh, you know a, 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 a big hill to climb. But I think Dion's going to be able to do it. Jay, Jay, going to Nebraska really quickly, about five minutes ago, they had a, a decommitment, their fifth decommitment of the class. Arnold Barnes, a, a three-star running back out of Louisiana, decommitted. I, I want to ask a question because with the transfer portal opening up today, um, do you expect more guys? I mean, you're expecting a lot of attrition probably at Nebraska, and, and understandably so, um, just with how the transfer portal is and now with staff shakeups. But is there a possibility that a lot of guys might wait and see where they kind of are standing in the spring to enter the portal? Or, I mean, are there benefits for a player to kind of take that wait and see approach or should they just get out of Dodge yeah. while they can? <laughs> well, I, I'm all, I'm a firm believer. Your best opportunity is here. Yeah, I, I, I do. Um, because, you know, here's the thing is that people, this, and this is both sides. This is where like a, a player, and or coach or administrator or coach can run into trouble. Um, and it's like, if you show up at a place and say, okay, I want to get rid of every single player and I'm not going to fairly evaluate and, and none of them are good. So we're done. We saw that with, 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 uh, with Frost kind of like when he came in, right. 
just got rid of all the players, all the coaches, and, and X, Y, and Z without really kind of evaluating it. Then also as a player, if your first glimpse or first idea to do is to transfer or go somewhere else, you're going to have competition there. There's yeah. going to be, you know, politics and so-called favorites there. You're going to have to figure it out. You know what's the known here. You know where to go to school and all this other stuff. And also if you've played, uh, you know, for Nebraska, say like whether you're a starter or a rotational player, you know what it takes to, to play in the Big Ten. So even if they brought in players, they inferior competition, you know what it's like to compete. You know what it's like to kind of push yourself to get out there and be able to play. And I'd always embrace a new situation as far as you never know. You might be able to become a better player uh, with the new coach. So I think it's going to be twofold. I think you get guys that, that have been thinking about getting in the portal maybe before it became official we had a new coach. And then I think some guys are going to stay and see and feel out the situation. Is it a right fit for me? Are they actually coaching me? Are they actually giving me a chance? You know what I'm saying? As far as, yeah. uh, you know, being a player and being in their system. So I think it's going to be twofold. And then also, you know, Nebraska isn't the only one that's going to face this type of stuff. There, there's going to be other players from other universities doing the same thing. So it's a constant. It's going to be a constant. In the NCAA or whatever did a really good job, job or a really good idea of making it only twice a year instead of just a free-for-all where you could do it, you know, essentially in the middle of spring or something like that. So, um, look, there's always – when you have a new coach and new – I mean, obviously a new staff and new everything that they have probably down there, there's going to be change and there's going to be attrition. And and uh, it, it won't ever – I don't think it's ever going to stop. And so it's just part of the, the landscape of college football. So I think the players are going to be getting in there and decommitting, looking for other places because also let's – so this would, it, I mean, there's so many moving parts to it. There's coaches that are watching this present, you know, like our our uh, incoming class, right? Mm-hmm. So they're picking up the phone and knowing that there might be a connection to a previous coach that's not there. You know what I mean? Even though Matt Rule and those guys have reached out to all of them, there's other schools that have done it, done it as well. And maybe they came a close second. You know what I'm saying? And so, uh, you know, I think it, today is the day, right? Today is the the, the yeah. opening. Nick, I call it the opening of the vortex. It's the bad. The vortex man. is there. Oh, yeah. It's always They're, appealing. A lot, a lot of people are going to get lost in there. They are. I mean, we we, we yeah. thought. I mean, yeah, well, think about it. we we thought last year that there oh. were there were a lot of guys that that went in there and never made it out, and, and now it's going to be double the amount this year they're double. predicting. I double. mean, it, it's going to it's just yeah. it, we're going to have the same conversations where uh, this many you know X what number of, yeah X number amount of guys went goes in but or go in but there's only so many spots and. Just because you think that there's you're you're one of the top players in the country doesn't mean that you really are. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot, you know, there's a lot of rankings that are out there that are I call them full gold rankings because, you know, say you, you know, Jay Foreman's a tight end, and I'm, you know, from I don't know, I could just just do an off brand state, you know, Montana, right? Mm-hmm. And I've only been able to go to one camp. I had a good camp, but I'm from Montana, and I'm six yeah. three, two twenty five, and I ran good. But you know what? I'm only a three star. Then there's somebody out there that say, you know, six five, two ten tight end that that you know does well, does all the you know kind of seven on seven stuff, and he might be a five star. Well, then you know, are you a fool's gold five star? Or are you a real deal? Exactly. You know what I mean? And so once you get there, and get the pad, you can really start to believe these rankings, and that and that only gets you in the door. Because once you start competing, and and then you got to learn a new system, learn how to deal with competition, learn how to deal with adversity, learn how to deal with uh, looking across, you know, eleven other guys that are just as good as you that don't really care what you did in high school, you know, that isn't measurable. So I think there's a lot of guys that are still loving to get recruited versus loving playing football and competing, and it's hard. And, I, and look, I've told, I've said it millions, millions of times. If there was a transfer portal, I can almost guarantee there was a, probably a chance I would have been in there after the festival. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But, it, but, but, my dad hung off the phone, probably called down there and said, do not take his uh, call, <laughs> you know, to go, you know, with the, with uh, Coach Osborne. And it all worked out for me. But I also think that the things that I went through at Nebraska made me more prepared and welcomed competition. Right. As I got into the NFL, now I don't know if that would have helped if I would have been that kind of competitive in that competitive spirit that was brought out of me if I didn't go through that. So I think, like I said, staying here, figuring it out, 
then make a really good realistic decision because the staff isn't even hired. Exactly. You know, and so, you know, I think that being here, figuring it out and going out there and competing is the best thing you can do. The Hall of Famer folks, Jay, always appreciate your insight and calling in and spreading some uh, some wisdom and knowledge on the hiring of primetime Deion Sanders as the next coach, is the coach right now for the Colorado Buffaloes. I know Jay uh, and DP will be sharing more on this, many other topics uh, on the on the, um, uh, the old school show at 4 o'clock. Definitely check them out. And again, Nick is going to have Sam Greasel on his show at 105 along with Rico, so don't forget that on the water cooler. We're going to pay some bills to the Hall of Famer. Have a great week. We'll listen to you later on, Jay. Appreciate you, little bro. Folks, we'll be back.